November is over and we have a fresh round of best of containers from last month. There are some big standouts in this group, like the ability to pull media libraries, automatic Docker cleanup, and a fun way to do Secret Santa this holiday season. All of these suggestions come from the self-host newsletters produced by Ethan Sholley. We review his newsletter every Friday on our live stream. This video will cover in no specific order 10 of the best apps we saw in the newsletters for the month of November. I'm your host, Evan, and this is number 10. Number 10 on the list for what you get is what you have. This is a powerful finance tracker designed for people who prefer a no budget, straightforward approach to managing their money. This is multi-currency support, customizable transactions, has a built-in dollar cost averaging tracker. Looking at the UI, we can see here it's got the dark mode theme by default, really nicely split up into a main center pane here and this right side, which gives me some overviews and some summaries on what's in all the test data. We can see a summary here with income, expenses, and total. We can see currencies if I want and the accounts that are listed. And for the purposes of this demo, it's just gonna be Bank of America, checking and credit cards. When I scroll back to the top and go all the way to the left, I can see a monthly spending summary, a yearly spending summary, a calendar, and some spending insights. So for this month, I can look at the account flow and I can see here, it's got this really nice chart where if I had something besides cash and savings, you could see the breakout here. For example, if I look at the category Explorer, Right now there's only a credit card and a dollar, but we can see the currency flow here shows that there is some uncategorized expenses, but you can see how this chart will eventually break down with more data. We change the date range to November. We can see the spending tree change directly in front of us. By looking at our net worth calculator, we can see the current projected amount of net worth and projected net worth. And you can see the breakout in the dollar amounts here on the left side. We can look at all transactions if we want. We can see a nice list here from today, yesterday, two weeks going all the way back. We can also see currency and accounts if we want to on the right side. There's a lot of other options here and this is a really nice and interesting way to manage money. I haven't seen a tracker like this in quite some time. All the other ones look kind of the same. This looks very different and it definitely feels very different being in the dashboards and jumping around the menus. If you wanna keep all of your finances off of the cloud and all personalized on your server without any data leakage, this is an excellent option. Up next is number nine. Number nine on the list is Jelly Swarm. Jelly Swarm is a really interesting idea. Let's say you have a bunch of different Jellyfin servers all on the same network. This will allow you to combine all of those servers into one interface. This way, if someone has content on their Jellyfin and I have content on my Jellyfin, I'll be able to see their content on my server and then they'll be able to see my content on their server. It's very simple to use. You can see here the UI is straightforward. You just add a server, tell it where it is, give it a priority and click the add button. You have the option here to set users so you can say what users can be allowed to go where. And in the settings cog here, you have a public address and your Jelly Swarm proxy. I'm kind of amazed at an idea this simple hasn't been done yet, but this one is done very, very well. I haven't seen something as simple as this done before. And this of course gives you the ability to massively improve the size of your library in the event that you can get on the same network as other people with their Jellyfin accounts. Up next is number eight. Number eight on the list is NetVisor. NetVisor automatically discovers and visually documents network infrastructure. This kind of reminds me of Nmap in that it scans your network, but instead of just giving you a console printout with all the things in it, it's gonna actually generate a picture for you with topology. You can edit this if you want and actually manually build things, or you can have it scan automatically and discover all of your network endpoints. There are sessions here for active discovery sessions, we can schedule ones every so often to make sure new network devices are not missed. There's a history of sessions here. We can see some of the tabs here show us the current networks we have, subnets and groups, any hosts that we've already added here, services, daemons, API keys, and users if you want to allow other people access to this interface. I think this could be a really powerful tool for your sysadmin or if you just have a ton of stuff on your network and you don't know what everything is or where everything is, or maybe your network changes very frequently and you wanna make sure you have an up-to-date topological map of what it is that you're hosting. This can be a very powerful tool to do that. And the fact that you can schedule scans lets you make sure that you're always up-to-date every single time you come in here. Up next is number seven. Number seven on the list is Posterizer. If you have a media server and you're really into the art and the covers of your media, Posterizer allows you to generate and customize covers for all the media that you have. We can schedule this to run anytime we want and it'll automatically rescan our media library and add posters for newly added media. When we go to asset management, we can see here the posters, background, season, title cards, everything that it generates will be listed in asset management. There are auto triggers here as well. The configuration lets you mess with a lot of things. 
The number one thing you're going to want to adjust is the library here. It'll show you whether or not you want to have a language preference, how you want the visuals to look, how you want the overlays to look on the posters, and how you want the collections cards to look. You also have the option of sending a notification here every single time this app runs. This can be a really great tool if you're one of these people who likes to have a lot of customization over the artwork in your media library. This allows you to create something custom without having to depend on one or the other. Up next is number six. Number six on the list is Bichon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Bichon is a email archive web manager. This allows you to, in your accounts page, go ahead and add an account that it has IMAP, pull it down, and it'll automatically bring in all of the emails into your mailbox. Once that happens, it archives them on your local disk. This way you never, ever lose email. In the event you're someone who needs to make sure your emails are never, ever lost, you could always save local copies with an app like this. It's super simple to set up once the account is added, and you don't even need to have IMAP. You can also have a no-sync account in the event you want to add one of those. Once that happens, you have the ability to search your mail, and you can add all kinds of things like OAuth 2 and access tokens in the event you want to make it a little bit more secure. The settings menu is very simple if you want to have a proxy here. Unfortunately, I can't show you a ton of the dashboard because that would require me to actually sync this with a real email client, and I can't show you guys that for this demonstration, but in the GitHub page, when we scroll down to the screenshots area, we can see the 30-day trend on this beautiful graph they have here of how many emails you were bringing in and archiving on your local system. Up next is number five. Number five on the list is Secret Santa. This is an automatic program that creates a Secret Santa party where you can go ahead and input all this information and it'll create a Secret Santa party for you. Now that I've inputted some sample data for my new party, let's go ahead and create a Secret Santa party. The party's been created and now I get a bunch of links to send to these people. You'll notice that I don't know who John Smith's person is. I can just send him his link without looking at it and he'll be told who his person is for Secret Santa. Let's go ahead and copy this link and open it in a new tab. Secret Santa assignment for this person is Will Archer. This is the party details, this is the budget, and this is the overlay of the card. So really a very simple container, but it does something really necessary in the event that you want to create a large amount of people and have them assigned to a Secret Santa without knowing who's going to who. Up next is number four. Number four is Zero Byte. Zero Byte is an automated backup solution very similar to something like Think Thing, except it might be easier for some users to use. In the UI, I get the option to set up a volume set up a repository to back up, and then set a backup schedule. In this case, I've already made a volume, which consists of a directory. In this case, it's my data slash configs. I've set up a repository. This is local, but of course, the strength of this is the fact that you have the ability to do many repositories. On the back end, I can do a local, I can do S3, Cloudflare, Google, Azure, REST, SMTP, or R clone. Rclone is a pretty amazing backup solution that's built into TrueNAS, and I've already constructed the container to use Rclone from the host operating system. You can go ahead and run the rclone command in TrueNAS to set up rclone and have it automatically sync to this container. To set up a backup job, I just can create a backup job. I select the volume that I want to back up, and then I select the target. I can set a frequency, a time, and then say what I want to back up and whether or not I want to include anything like exclusions and the retention policy. I can have it notify me anytime it does anything using these notification types here. And I have additional settings if I want to change my password or set up a backup recovery key. ZeroByte is pretty simple to use, and it works really, really cleanly without having to worry so much about permissions like you would on SyncThing. Up next is number three. Number three on the list is PruneMate. PruneMate performs a very important function, and that's cleaning up after your Docker containers. If you're frequently experimenting in your home lab with lots of Docker containers by installing stuff, removing stuff, maybe installing different stuff later, you may have a lot of images, volumes, or networks just lying around that aren't actually attached to anything taking up valuable hard drive space. This container automatically schedules cleanups where you can go ahead and check off every single one of these options to remove unused containers, images, networks, and volumes on a schedule, in this case at 3 a.m., or run it immediately. So I can go ahead and run this now to show you guys how this is gonna work. So we get this notification that the job was executed manually and we can see how much I saved already. This is a 3.9 gigabit reclamation, one run, 188 images it saved me. So I had a lot of stuff laying around on the system and I can set up notifications if I want. So in this case, it defaults to Gotify or Notify. So in this case, I would be able to enable the notification, set my URL, set my app token, and have it tell me about everything it cleans as it runs. This container should be on everybody's list if you run a home lab where you're frequently installing and removing Docker containers. Absolutely consider adding this and running this to your daily stack. Up next is number two. Number two on the list is Backvault. 
Backfault performs a very important function if you're using Bitwarden or Vaultwarden in that it backs up the database holding all of your credentials. This is not automatically done by Bitwarden or by Vaultwarden, it has to be done manually, but this container allows you to automate that solution and in the environment variables, set an hourly interval at which you wanna back up your database. When I click initialize, I will now get the setup complete message. This UI will now stop and the container will enter normal mode. You can close this window. That's all there is to it. After this, the container just runs in the background and whatever interval you set it, it will back up your database every so often. This makes your passwords completely safe, even though they're backed up to your hard drive in the event you were ever to lose possession of that hard drive. And now if you lost your Bitwarden or your Vault Warden containers, your passwords are safe no matter what. Up next is number one. Number one on the list is Listing Lab. Listing Lab creates your own personal Redfin or Zillow-like experience on your server. To show you how this works, I'm basically gonna go over to 90210 on Redfin and just pull the first listing I see, which is 2258 Gloaming Way. I'm gonna copy just the address and paste it in a new real estate listing. I'm then gonna click Update Property, and there's a scrape request that's built into the app that's gonna pull all the information down from whatever listing website currently shows all this information. When I click back to my real estate, I can now see a nice little tile for it on my homepage and it's listed as active. It shows the price of $10.8 million. And when I click it, I can see all this information in my browser completely privately without having to deal with the pop-ups or any of the other issues of common real estate listing websites or apps. By scrolling down, I can see it scraped successfully all this information about the listing, including tags, tax assessment value, and property features. The really interesting thing about this is not only do I get all this information in a really nice interface, I also get additional functionality within the app by clicking this home menu here, I can start a discussion on what looks like its own built-in version of Slack for anybody else that's on this app. If I had possibly a team of realtors or if it was just me and my wife looking for something, we can keep all of our discussion in one place surrounding the listings. I could also update the property here by clicking this button and it'll automatically send another scrape request for this listing. In the event something changes, I could always update properties on the fly. Thank you all for watching another summary of the Self-Host newsletter. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel to get the latest videos about all things self-hosted. Leave a comment below if there are containers you wanted to see make this list or containers you're already using and absolutely love. If you wanna have a longer conversation with us, jump on our Discord server. You can find an invite link in the video description below. As always, stay curious.